Good morning, everybody. We're here for another GardenWise adventure, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Neil Hinckley. And I actually just met him. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen some of his videos that he's put out. He, he grows a lot of really interesting fruit. So today, I'd like to get a little bit of an introduction of one to who you are and how you got into growing you know, fruit. All right, so I'm Neil Hinckley, like you said. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer, so it doesn't really have anything to do with growing <laughs> fruit. Uh, but kind of what got me started, well, I'd always liked plants and landscaping and stuff. And I took some landscaping courses in school. Uh, then I went and I lived in the Dominican Republic for a couple of years. Oh, wow. And it kind of made me realize how incredibly wasteful American yards are. <laughs> we, a lot of green grass. We throw a lot of money at them and we don't get anything out of them. And it just seems kind of dumb. Um, so I decided I wanted to do an edible landscape, uh, but more in a traditional landscape sense, so not with like garden boxes or anything, just everything kind of in the ground, spread around, so it looks like a normal landscape, unless you know what but you're looking useful. for. Yeah, <laughs> and you get lots of food from it. Okay, perfect. Well, let's go around and look at some of your plants and kind of hear from you what's worked, what hasn't, maybe what your neighbors have said and stuff like that. All right. I like that. This is on the west side of my house. It's a lot of shade because my neighbors have a two-story house next to it and it's under a big elm tree that I actually just got through today. So it used to be a lot shadier. Uh, and it's hard to find edibles that work in the shade. So I've got a lot of uh, sweet woodruff. Ah, tea again. Hey. <laughs> I already am. Yeah, I am already in love with Tegan. She's so cute. Oh, thank you. There. So yes. Tegan loves to roll around in the sweet woodruff. It smells very nice. Yeah. So I don't mind it either. And she smells nice. Um, and then I've got a couple of young pawpaw trees here since they do like to be in the shade for at least like the first few years of their life. So it was actually really easy to get them started here. I didn't have to do anything special. And then I have a couple uh, more unusual edibles here. So I have um, Solomon Seal. Is Solomon seal inedible? So in the early spring you can eat the spears like asparagus. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So it's a native to, the, to North America, edible, really good spring vegetable. Um, there's also some hostas in the back that I just planted this spring, so they're not very big yet. Same thing. So have you tried have you tried the hostas? Not yet. I mean, just currants basically. So in the back there's red currants. And then there's ones here on the front are some black jossa berries. Okay, have you had any had a harvest from them? And yeah. are they good? Are they worth growing? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them for fresh eating, I can tell you that. Okay, that's good but to know. I do have a bunch in the freezer that I'm gonna try and make some jam and jelly out of. Post your results, I'd love to I'd love to hear if it's worth it or not. So that's how they're typically used, so I'm hoping that it turns out pretty well. Yeah. yeah well see. perfect. I actually have some new experiments. So my yard is all those experiments. It's like just trying yeah. out a million things and seeing what works. That's so, the way to do it. It's the only way to do it. For the spring I got, well the summer actually, I got some uh, pistachio seeds. Oh. From some trees that have been growing on Utah State campus for like 30, 40 years. Somebody just asked me about that. So, they asked me if you know, pistachios <laughs> can grow and if you knew of anybody who, you know, yeah, so it, generally, like, the pistachios you'll buy in the store, you can't grow here. Right, they're, they're California, hardy, right. Yeah. Uh, but these ones are from, I believe they were brought over by some Iranian students in the 70s. Uh -huh. uh, and they've been growing in Utah State, which is quite a bit colder than here. So it should be okay. I know the guy I got them from, he lives in Saratoga Springs, and he has... So is he growing, does he have trees there? He probably has 30 or so trees. Really? The oldest are only probably three years old. Okay, so they're but not producing quite yet then. Yeah, he hasn't had any trouble with them dying. And that's the A number one step. Yeah. yeah. Get and them to live. Another thing with pistachios is they're male and female trees. Okay. So you have to have at least one male and one female to get any nuts. Yeah. So I have two here. I actually planted these inside and then moved them out here in July. And they really like the heat and dryness, so they have a Yeah, they look, it at all. they look healthy, tiny but healthy. Mm -hmm. I actually have three more over there, but you can barely see them. They're kind of buried in time. Well, <laughs> I'm buried in time. I like that. So, 
Yeah, so, it's, you know, that's one of my experiments for this year. Uh, I've got some more pawpaws, figs. And this pawpaw actually has some fruit on it. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can... Yeah, so this is the first year it's fruited. It's only been in the ground for three years, but it's been growing like crazy yeah, for a pawpaw. Yeah, good size. So it's, I mean, it's uh, about five feet tall now. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy that it's already fruiting. Uh, so that's a sunflower pawpaw. Oh, the sunflower. I've heard, I tried that one three times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's a little one in there that's just a seedling. I accidentally oh, weed whacked it this morning, or this oh, spring. No. It's coming back pretty well. So my question is, I've tried growing pawpaw, you know, I, I, I buy the pawpaws, they get there in that four, four inch pot, and they're like newly grafted, so they still have the graft tape on them, and they don't ever survive. Where did you get them? Were they grafted, you know, with the grafting tape on them still? What size were they when you got them? So that one was one of two I think I got from Stark Brothers. Stark Brothers, okay. Yeah, so that's the only one that lived. The, all, the, all the others, well, no, so the seedlings, this one and there was one there that died. And then I replaced it with another one that's not looking very good. Yeah. But that was probably my fault. Uh, so the, I have a seedling here and a seedling over there. I got those from ediblelandscaping.com. Yeah, that's where I got mine, the first um, few. I have not had the best luck with theirs. Oh, that's too bad. Have no. you tried Willis Orchards? But they only have like two tried varieties. Willis, but the two over there and that one that died because of me, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're from One Green World. Uh, okay. And I've had the best luck with them. Okay, I need to try that. Yeah, so the reason that one died is I, it was doing really well this spring, so I took the shade off of it. Oh. And I probably should have waited another year. <laughs> so yeah. I'm hope I put the shade back up, and I'm hoping it'll come back. But we'll see. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're they're like blessed little children that you weep over and then go get another one. <laughs> yeah. The first, if you can get them through the first two years, then you they're, they're, get to they're go. bulletproof. But yeah. It's just those first two years are kind of dry. Yeah, because your, yours, the ones that are healthy, look really good. Mm. Well, and you have figs too. Uh -huh. Yeah, so these are Chicago hardy figs. Okay, I need to try figs again. So mine down to the ground every year, uh -huh. and it, they're five feet tall already. Yeah, that is amazing. Um, I haven't really done anything special for them. This year, I was going to try this last year, but this year I'm really going to try it. I'm going to bend one of the branches down to the ground. And, and just, see if it lives. And see the if winter. it lives. Because the stuff right at the base, like the first four inches or so, usually survives. Yeah. I don't put anything around them. They just die back. Don't come back. I just okay. let them go. <laughs> so, so see, this is this is good to know. Yeah. I think you could probably get the branches to survive pretty easily if you bent them down or if you yeah piled just really some leaves around them. them. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a lot of really pretty herbs here. Lovage, oregano, thyme, lemon thyme. We've got regular chives. Oh, and hyssop. Chives. It looks like over there. This is some sunset hiss up here. It's a native. And then the anise hiss up over there, right? Yep. Yeah. And then I have some true hiss up behind those two. Oh, okay. And then that purple sage that I love so much. That mm -hmm. yeah, I so think that's one of the best landscape plants. It grows like mad. I weed whack that down to the ground every spring. Well, it's yeah. like this in like two months. And then after that, you really don't have to do anything. Yeah. It's impossible to kill. So. Yeah. I've got some just regular green sage behind it too, the catman, uh, lavender, rosemary. Um, How old is your rosemary? Uh, so oldest ones are three years old. Well, and it's just gorgeous. I love that it, it looks like just a beautiful landscape, mm -hmm. but it's all useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, this is berries and fruit trees. Uh, rhubarb. Yeah, your rhubarb is huge. It's like a monster. Yeah. It actually looked a lot better about a month ago because it's been getting eaten by some uh, the air rigs really bad recently. Okay. So, and I've been too busy to put out some sluggo plus or whatever to take care of it. Yeah. I don't really care. It's not going to kill them. No. So. <laughs> um, and this is mostly strawberries. I actually got a ton of strawberries out of here this spring. I was surprised. I didn't get any last year. And this spring I got. Or 15 pounds. I guess that's not that much considering, but I don't do anything for them. Yeah, if you don't have to do anything, any is great. Mm -hmm. Like I don't trim them, I don't fertilize them. So what's mixed in with them? There's. So I've got uh, another experiment here. So this is some 
ground cherry. Okay, because I was uh, noticing pineapple it was looking ground cherry. really it's interesting. Like this one right here. So they're kind of bright yellow. Oh, it's so pretty. You want to try it? Yeah, I've never tried these before. Thank you. So they're kind of funny. They taste like pineapple. They taste kind of weird. That is really, actually, really good. I am going to have to do this. So they're, they, when they're ripe, they just fall off the plant. And so you pick them up off the ground. Yeah. So that's why they're ground cherry, so bug got to that one. Yep. Usually the bugs don't get to them too bad, but you can see a little bug right there. They're trying to get to this guy. So you really haven't had to do much with them, it looks like. If you oh, just no. They're super easy to grow. So do they need full sun? Do they need... Full, well, at least or can they tolerate shade? Sun. Okay. So I had them, um, my vegetable garden's on the east side of my house, we'll show you out here in a minute. Yeah. And I grew a different variety, some Aunt Molly's there last year, and they did fine. Do they taste the same, or are they... That's pretty similar, honestly. Okay. I think this is probably a little bit better. But there's not a huge difference. And where did you get the seeds? So I actually got a start for these from, I think, Stuck's Farm. Okay, yeah. They do a plant sale up in Pleasant Grove every spring. So I also have some uh, raspberry shortcake raspberries. Okay, because those were looking different than the you know, the ground cherries here. Yeah, so that's about as tall as they'll get, maybe a little bit taller than that. Have you gotten any fruit off them, and is the fruit any good? The fruit's really good. It's honestly oh, my good. favorite raspberry. <laughs> See, that's good to know, because I've been starting to recommend those in my designs, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I've never tasted them, am I really, you know, yeah, no, they're they're them. really flavorful. Um, they're not like super sour. I do, I find them to be a really well balanced raspberry. I like them better than Heritage. Yeah. Um, I have some purple raspberries over there. And I like these better than those. Yeah. Uh, they don't so far haven't been really heavy producers. Like I've, how old are they? Uh, so this was their second year. Second year, okay. Well, yeah, second full year for the one in the front. And the one in the back, this was its second, like it's, it was planted a year ago in the spring. Oh, I love it. So what has been your favorite thing, your best producer, you know, best overall useful uh, ones? Edible. <laughs> I've actually really liked these mulberries. Now, which variety are these? So these are Giraldi Dwarf or Girardi Dwarf. I've seen them where they grow. They only get maybe six feet tall. Oh, wow. So they're dwarf, mm -hmm. really dwarf. Yeah, and I got... I pick a handful of berries off of these every two days for four months. Wow. Almost. So, well, like two and a half, three months, maybe. But yeah, it was, it was amazing. And they're small. And they're really pretty plants. Mm -hmm. uh, another one I had a lot of luck with this year is the clove currants. The what currants? Clove, cur clove currants, currants or golden okay. currants. They're called oh, the okay. Same, it's the same plant. Uh, so they're a native to Utah. So they would do well here then. Yeah, and they do really well and they produce a ton. So this was their second spring in the ground. And they had so much fruit on them, the branches were bending down and laying on the oh, ground. Oh, wow. What did so you do with it? There's still some over there, actually. Yeah. What did but, you do with the fruit? Um, this is actually the only current that I will eat just off the plant. Oh, so they're, they're good fresh then. I like them. Um, it's still got a ton on them. I picked a bunch of oh, these. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can try that one. Yeah, I don't think I've had currants before. So they're not like super... They strong. are good! Mm -hmm. so these are awesome. They're a great decorative plant too because they're just covered in bright yellow flowers in the early spring. Yeah. They're is this not... another one of your mulberries or is this a different? A... Oh, Chinese hop! Uh -huh. Where did you get that? That's another one I'm going to try, yeah, so is Aronia. It's also called chokeberry. Yeah. I'm not real enthusiastic about eating them raw, but... No, I actually tried one once and they were nasty, but they're so pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. a great decorative plant. They're supposed to be really healthy. I'm yeah. sure you can make some decent... And I think the birds uh, like them too. So. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a Chinese ha. This is a Whitney crab apple. Now, what's mm -hmm. the difference between a Whitney crab apple and just crab apples? So these are supposed to be good for eating out of hand. Oh, okay. So you can see a little apple here. Yeah. It's not going to get much bigger than that. Okay. But it's not supposed to be astringent like most crab apples. Right. 
So we'll see. <laughs> is that does that get the regular size of a regular crab apple, like fifteen yeah. feet tall wide? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, most of the trees in here stay fairly small, like that thing. So it's also about fifteen feet. Yeah. Uh, the I have two uh, persimmons right here, actually. Oh, you have the persimmons. I've been mm -hmm. wanting to ask about persimmons. So this is a hachia. So. Like, I'll be careful with persimmons because most of them are not hardy here. Right, exactly. And the ones that are, are tend to be kind of marginal, so it depends on where you live. Uh, these have only gone through one winter, so it was a relatively coldish winter. Yeah, not as cold as it can get, but I don't, yeah. Yeah, they both did fine. Yeah, that looks absolutely great. Yeah, and it's got a fruit. Probably six of them, but it, it's dropped them as I can't support them, so it just has the one now. Yeah. And then the one behind it is a... Uh, it's a Jiro. This is a this one. Yeah, it's a Fuyu variety. So this is a non-astringent variety. So you can eat them when they're still hard. Oh, uh, really? And these okay. Ones you have to wait till they're soft before you can eat them. Oh, and they're gorgeous trees. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially once they start filling in, I think they'll be really, really pretty. Now, I thought I heard somebody talking about a contorted persimmon. Is there such a thing, or am I did I, I hear wrong? I've heard of a contorted persimmon. There is a so these are all uh, Asian persimmons. Right. Uh, there's an American persimmon that's definitely hardy here. Okay. Uh, but it can be a little bit more temperamental with the fruit. Oh. So there's actually a hybrid. It's called Nikita's Gift. Liz is growing. I know yeah, Liz. Liz. She's growing. Okay. Liz is growing it. I haven't actually seen any updates, so I don't know how it's doing for her. Yeah. But We're going to have to ask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's kind of cool. So this is sea kale. Oh, so I is, thought it was just like your regular, like, <laughs> I don't know, I was thinking of, you know, a ton of broccoli or maybe a mm -hmm. cabbage that got... No, so this is sea kale. It's a native to uh, England and kind of that area. It grows on the yeah. beaches. Uh, so it's really hardy. It survived the winter, no problem. I didn't mulch it or anything. Uh, the leaves, I think, are a little better for eating fresh. Like, if you want to put a little bit in a soup, it's probably okay. Yeah. But the flower stalks I really liked. I thought they were better than broccoli. How long a season did they um, flower? Uh, so they're actually in flower for maybe two or three weeks. Okay. So it, it's kind of a late spring kind of vegetable if you're going for the flower stalks. Yeah. Well, perfect. And then that almost looks like a cotone aster, but it's not. What is that? Uh, so that's a bush cherry. Oh, that's the bush cherry. Mm -hmm. That's so, the other one I'm going to try. So the one in the front is Juliet. I didn't get any cherries off of it this year. Uh, but the one behind it is Romeo. Now and you have I, to have both, right? Uh, you don't have to, but they do better if okay. you have both of them. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous plants. Mm -hmm. And they get lots of pretty flowers in the spring. Romeo I got... I just planted them last year. And I got... Probably two handfuls of cherries off of it. How did they taste? Are they like sour cherries or okay? That so, so it took me a minute. Well, it took me a few tries to realize when they're ripe. Okay. But once I figured that out, they were really good. They're a little bit more sour than a sweet cherry, uh -huh. but definitely something you can just eat out of hand. Oh, perfect. Okay. So how did you tell when they were ripe? Uh, when they got really dark red. Okay. <laughs> so they start out green and then they were bright red for like three weeks. You're like, okay. And so I ate a couple of them and then I just gave up and came back a couple weeks later and they've gotten a lot darker. I'm like, well, I'll try it again. And it was pretty good. So these are another experiment. Uh, so I just planted these this summer. They're it looks a, like a, a can you guess? pomegranate. Yep. It's yeah. A pomegranate. So these are supposed to be hardy here. So what is it? What kind is it? Because I didn't know there was any that were hardy. So here. there are a few varieties that are supposedly hardy to zone six. Uh, this one I got from uh, Rare Seeds or Baker Creek. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they were just little tiny starts, like four inches tall. And I actually ordered two and planted them right away and they died. Oh, like, no. Within days. And then, so I ordered two more and repotted them inside and let them get a little bit more established. And then I moved them out and they were fine. So what time of year did you order them and what time of year did you put them out? Uh, so I ordered them... Probably in April. Uh -huh. and I put them out end of May. Okay, good. So kind of don't let them get hit by those frosts when they're really, really so little. I don't think it was the frost. I think it was they just didn't really have any roots yet. Okay. 
See, that's the problem that I'm finding when you order plants from some of these online places. They're great, but not. I think they're having such a hard time supplying people that they're sending them out way too early. So with these, they do list that you know these are a tissue culture. They're not established. Okay, so at least they tell you. Yeah. So I think that's what's happening with the pawpaws. Mm -hmm. They're they're just you know potting them up and sending them out, and they really are not established. Yeah. And then pawpaws you can't plant in the fall. Yeah. So you have to find a way to overwinter them or, you know, yeah, get them rooted yeah, well enough to I, plant them in the summer. I, mean, I, as far as the online nurseries go, I really recommend One Green World. Everything okay. from I've gotten, I've gotten from them has been great. Uh, got some quince out there. Got those from them. They seem to be struggling a little bit in our soil. Are they the ones that are chlorotic a little? Yeah. So I'm trying to, they didn't have any bark or anything over them for most of this year. I've just been working on clearing this out this yeah. whole summer. And so I'm hoping that that will help them a little bit because they're marginal right now. Okay. I think they'll probably be okay in a couple of years, but. You just got to get them through those couple of years. Yeah. Elderberries. Uh, now what varieties? Is this just the American, regular American yeah, elderberry? So, well, so I've got Nova and York. Okay. Are the two varieties I have. I want to get a, one of the blue ones that are more like what we have in the mountains here. Yeah. Because uh, I've eaten those ones in the mountains and they're really good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat too many, it'll make you sick. Uh, and I have a uh, medlar. Oh, so you have a medlar too. Okay. Have you tried the fruit yet? So I only got one last year. I just planted it last year. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very small. I liked the flavor. The flavor is good, but did, how did the texture? Because the texture just... I couldn't really tell because it was, there was so it was little. Tiny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to try a few different things with it this year. Somebody suggested, I think it was like apple butter type something hmm. or other. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that. Yeah, I think I'm going to get another one. Uh, just because I have the two. I'm going to try and get one of the more modern varieties. I think this is the same one you have, Bread the Bre Giant. Yeah. I'm going to try one of the more modern varieties and see how they compare. Okay, yeah. I'd love to hear. Because they're beautiful trees. Yeah. Once they get big, Huge they're gorgeous. Flowers. Yeah. yeah, they're great. Uh, and I have a uh, pluot and a pluary. Hold in size this year. <laughs> so what variety of pluot? It's a uh, flavor king. That is my favorite. From um, uh, service berries too. Uh, they're in the recovery stage. So. <laughs> <laughs> recovery from? <laughs> from being planted and not planted oh, yeah. for three months. <laughs> they're coming back. The service berries are so, I mean, yeah. resilient. Yeah, they, they won't die. It's just going to take them a couple years to get yeah. Back up to strength. So these are obviously not the shrub, they're the trees. These are the shrubs. So oh, those are, are the shrubs. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Regents. Oh, this one. I, yeah. Yeah, so these are Regent. Service yeah, Regent, I love. That's the one that I grow. So I have three. Oh, yeah, and that's, yeah. So that one, that I didn't even great. know it was a service berry until it leafed out this spring. I thought it was a weed. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> and then that one and this one I just planted this spring. It was a five gallon, but I, I didn't water it, so. Yeah. It'll come back. It'll come back, yeah. They're, they're really hardy. Yeah. Uh, this is another experiment. So this is a yuzu citrus. Oh, I've been wondering if anybody has tried citrus here. So it's supposed to be hardy to zero Celsius, no, zero Fahrenheit. Okay, so is that a zone seven or? So that's, yeah, zone seven. Um, but if you keep it in a pot or so build a, you know, something over it. Well, I've gone back and forth on what I want to do with this thing because I don't think our season is long enough for it to fruit here. Right. Even if it survives. Yeah. So I kind of regretted buying it and I just stuck it in a pot and I'll probably take it inside. The thing is like I'm growing probably up to over 80 edible plants. Yeah, and it's, in... let's pan around one more time. This is just a fraction of his property. Mm -hmm. a could grow huge amount. All of these on a quarter acre of the house in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. I had a less, I had a really tiny property in California, and I had eighty different varieties of fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So people think that you can't grow a lot on a small. Oh lot, no, but you, you, can. you don't have to put plant them so that they're going to get to full size. Matter of fact, you don't want them full size. Yeah. Crowd them a bit, prune them. So things like my dad comes. Aren't those a little close together? So I, yeah, if you wanted a full size production out of them. But if you have 80 different varieties, yeah, you, don't need, you want a little off of each one and you're eating all year. You don't need optimal production off of these fruit trees. You're not a commercial grower. You're growing it for yourself. 
Yeah. Just pack them in and enjoy it. See, I love that. I love that you said that. Because, yeah, a lot of people get worried about that. You know, I want to plant all my trees 10 to 20 feet apart. And... Yeah. Well, another thing to remember is that landscapes evolve over time. Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, I have a landscape plan. I'm just going to plant it and I'll never have to change anything ever. No. That's not Things how it die, works. you shove more stuff in, then you hate something trees and you grow, dig it out. And you trees shade grow. out stuff yep. that's grown under them and then you have to plant something different there. It's, you know, it's just part of the fun. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so thank you very much, Neil. I really yeah. appreciate this. And I challenge everybody to go find one new thing. It's one new thing, plant it and see how it does. Yeah. And that's what a garden adventure is. So go have a garden adventure. Mm -hmm.